Imagine for a second you're sitting at church and all of a sudden the pastor up at front decides to get everyone to recite the Sparkle Creed. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. This is pretty insane and we need to know as Christians how to respond to this type of lunacy. This video is brought to you by my patrons on Patreon. This is my full-time gig and it's you guys that support me and what I'm doing to equip people to follow Jesus daily. So thank you so much and if you want to support what I'm doing, click the link in my description. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. And let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the rainbow spirit who shatters our image of one white light and refracts it into a rainbow of gorgeous diversity. I believe in the church of everyday saints as numerous, creative, and resilient as patches on the ace quilt, whose feet are grounded in mud and whose eyes gaze at the stars in wonder. I believe in the calling to each of us that love is love is love. So beloved, let us love. I believe, glorious God, help my unbelief. Amen. Okay, there were a lot of problems with that, obviously. Uh, but the first thing that comes to mind is that this church is trans. And I don't say that to be hyperbolic, but it is pretending to be something that it's not. This church is pretending to be a church. This pastor is pretending to be a pastor. This congregation is pretending to be a congregation of believers that are gathered around to worship God, maybe. They're pretending to be something that they're not because they're worshiping an idol. Now, the funny thing about the creed is that it says that God has plural pronouns. And you look at a verse like, um, let us make man in our image, right? In Genesis. Okay, God is not binary and he's uh you know he's a they them it's like no 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 three distinct persons father son and holy spirit and yet one and so that's why it says let us make man in our image it's affirming the doctrine of the trinity god is not a they them <laughs> now when you watch this video it's plain to see that they are engaging in worship that's obvious, but they're not engaging in worship of the true God. They're engaging in worship of their own behavior, their own sexuality, their own beliefs, their own ideology, themselves, putting their faith in themselves. There's no faith being put in Jesus at all. Like when you see um, wh what they're noting in their creed, right? This idea that Jesus has this awesome tunic and he has two dads and it's like, and God has they, them pronouns. That's not worship of the true God. That's worship of their own ideology. And you can see so clearly what they're worshiping. And it's not God because there's no mention of Jesus dying on the cross. There's no mention, mention of the gospel of his sinless life. It's all about trying to pull things out of the Jesus story of the, the Bible that will affirm their own agenda, that will affirm their own beliefs, things that aren't even true or things that are phrased really weirdly like Jesus had two dads. It's like, that is so weird. Why would you do that? Well, you do it because it affirms what you already believe about the world and your own um, preconceived notions about how this all should be oriented. Of course, you know, Jesus has two dads. That's good. Like he's got two gay dads. It's like they know that's not true, but they're still going to say it. Why? Because they want to be provocateurs, because they want the biblical narrative to affirm their beliefs. There's a lot of reasons for it. Ultimately, it's rebellion. Ultimately, it's rebellion against God in worship of things that are not of him. I think of uh, Aaron when he made the golden calf. Moses was up getting the Ten Commandments and everyone was like, hey, uh, Aaron, we want somebody to worship. We want somebody to continue to lead us. And so Aaron's like, okay, let's get all the gold together that's going to um, you know, melt it down and form this golden calf and it will continue to take us to where we need to be. Let's make a sacrifice to it. And everyone starts worshiping it. And you're like, what is going on? Okay, why are people doing this? Well, number one, God's commandments are absent. Okay, Moses is on the mountain. He's getting the commandments. God's commandments are absent and everyone turns to idol worship. You think about this Sparkle Creed Church. Are God's commandments present? 
Well, everyone's got their conscience, right? But they're in rebellion against him. So there's no adherence to the commandments. When it says, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Like the two greatest commandments, when they, when Jesus talks about the, the whole law of God being summed up in those commandments, is there any adherence to those things? Not at all. Those things have been disposed of for self-love, for what I believe I should be. Now, we were all there at some point, worshiping things that were not God, rebelling against him, but God in his grace saved us. And that's what we're calling people to, is to recognize these are idols. These are not things that will satisfy you. And in fact, um, you were rebelling against the God who created you by worshiping them. She uses this phrase, love is love. This is a really common phrase. Um, simply saying that, you know, all love is basically equal, whether it's gay love, straight love, trans love, whatever place on the spectrum, polyamorous love, it's all love. Um, but then you begin to ask people a little bit deeper and you say, oh, what about um, a man that loves a little boy in that way? Is that okay? And maybe our culture is going in the direction where they begin to say, yeah, more and more. Yeah, it's okay. When you look at uh, minor attracted persons or maps, it's like, okay, this is absolutely insane that our culture is accepting this. It's becoming more normalized. But I think for most people, they would still say, no, that's wrong. That's a wrong kind of love. And we, we kind of find a, a real important truth here that love, when it's oriented at the wrong thing, it's wrong, right? When love is oriented in a wrong way, that's not love. And so when we, what we should do is we should love what is good and hate what is evil. That's actually what Romans 12, 9 says. Let us love what is genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. If your love is oriented in the wrong way, if it's directed at the wrong object, that love is not good. Now, just in case there was any confusion, this lady is not a pastor. This church is not a church. It's just a building where people gather and they hang out and they say a bunch of stuff and it goes viral on social media. And uh, it's, it's a trans church, a church that pretends to be a church, but it is nothing of the sort. What do we do with this outrage? What do we do with this maybe holy anger that hopefully we have towards this just disgusting perversion of Jesus and the gospel? Because it's okay to have anger towards us. That's a, that's not a right thing. But the Bible says, be angry and do not sin. And so we need to understand also where we stand before God, that we on our own, we have nothing we, we are only saved by the grace of God that we're just beggars that have found bread. And so we shouldn't stand on our high horse. But at the same time, we do have a standard that we can say, this is wrong. This is, this is just disgusting and a perversion and taking of things that are holy and bringing them down to the level of the muck and the mire. So that's what we, we can say to this. Absolutely. But we shouldn't let that just stew in that anger or stew in that frustration at the world. Um, but rather let that lead us to movement, to firm up our grasp on the gospel. What is the gospel truly? Do you know the gospel? Because maybe you're watching this Sparkle Creed and you're saying, this is ridiculous. This is stupid. You know, this is a mockery of church and, and of the gospel and of Jesus. And that's all right. And that's good. But if you don't know the truth, if you are not able to verbalize, okay, what did Jesus actually come here to do, right? What was his mission here? If it wasn't just to wear a fabulous tunic and have two dads, then what was he to here to do? Because that's what's going to change people's hearts. It's going to be the gospel. It's going to be the Holy Spirit working through us as we verbalize the truth to these folks that are so deceived and in rebellion against God. So what did Jesus come to do? Well, he came to live the sinless life that we couldn't live and die on the cross, the death we deserve to die for our sins against God. That's something this lady, this pastor lady will never tell you about sin and about judgment and about wrath. But it's only when we understand those things that we can truly understand the grace and the mercy and the redemption that Jesus has provided in his sacrifice on our behalf. And the good news is that through that receiving of his grace and putting our faith in him, repenting for our sins, we find a new identity in him where we no longer worship our identity of who we once were, of, of our sin, of our rebellion, of our sexuality, whatever that looked like, of our perversion. But now we find a new identity in God and, and who he calls us. And he calls us his children. And now we delight to follow him. It's not this 
um, this heavy burden on our shoulders that now I need to be good. I need to measure up to the standard of perfection, but rather Jesus has met that standard of perfection. And now as his child, I can delightfully pursue the calling that he has on my life. And this is an amazing invitation that we have to bring forward to people. And so this is the distinction here. Don't let this outrage of what you're seeing in this video lead you to despair, but rather let it lead you to delight knowing that Jesus is victorious over all of it. And he is equipping you even now to go out and share this gospel with people that are deceived, that are in rebellion, and he's going to work through that. And that is an amazing, amazing message. If you got something from this video, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. Thanks again to the patrons that support what I do. It is a huge blessing. Until next time, God bless.